Hi, I'm Michael from Algomin, and this is 26 Questions with Michael. Guys, there's so much that you can do at Mexi.com. By registering through the QR code or the link down below, you will reinvent the crypto space for yourself. And not only that, you will also get 20% off your trading fee. So go ahead and sign up today. Also, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Hey, Michael, welcome to the interview. Super excited to have you today. How are you doing? Well, thanks, Mark, and uh, excited to be here, and thank you for having me. Likewise. Okay, so our community is excited to ask questions regarding Algamint. They have their questions piled up. I want to hear from you what Algamint is all about, the insights, the depth of the project, and if you're ready, we can go ahead and I can ask you the questions one by one. Great, mate, let's do it. Okay, so starting off with question number one. What was the motive to build this project, and what is the present vision and mission? So. Originally, we had set out to build a basic bridge to allow Algorand to interact with other ecosystems. But, you know, as a part of digging into the Algorand tech stack, we really started to appreciate the interoperability technology Algorand was natively developing, which is called state proofs. And what that really meant for us is we, we started looking at the idea that we could allow Algorand as, as a full layer one blockchain technology to be a settlement layer for all blockchain ecosystems and allow for and low cost settlements of, of cross chain transactions. So even though in theory, it's we're building a bridge, it's gonna be a lot more powerful than that once we actually see the implementation of all the features we're building. Makes sense. Okay, question number two. What is the first thing you would like people to think of when Algament is mentioned to them? The simplest version is we are a bridge. I think the more complex version is we're the source of liquidity or the source of best price for future transactions. And that really is because the bridge will act as a cross-chain transaction point. So it won't just look at doing aids in terms of best price to go from USD to ETH, for example. It'll be going from USD in a whole range of different USD tokens to a whole range of different ETH token options across different chains which gives a lot more power in terms of providing best price for those that want to trade. So, you know, it's a bridge that'll allow access to best price trading. Okay, sounds good. Can you tell us more about the future proof blockchain and how it will change the blockchain world? So Algorand, for those that aren't familiar with it, is, is a fairly new layer one technology. It actually is its third birthday coming up in June, founded by Silvio Macali, one of the greatest cryptographers and computer scientists to ever live. I won the Turing Award, for example, which is the equivalent of Nobel Peace Prize for computer science. I invented things like zero knowledge proofs, pseudo random number generation, and really is the grandfather of cryptographics and in many ways, the grandfather of modern day blockchain technology. So he really was one of the only people in the world that was well positioned and, and of a high enough caliber and capability to deliver a blockchain that truly solves the trilemma. And that's really what Algorand does. So for us, we really understood that vision and appreciated that vision. And then building out on that technology meant we're going to be a part of this next revolution of blockchain tech. Can you tell us about your team members? Are they qualified and professional in their fields? And what are the recruiting qualifications for team members for your project? So between us, we've got a really vast array of skills from several different industries. Myself, I founded one of the largest gold companies in Australia. I founded that straight out of high school when I was our team and built it into one of the largest companies in Australia through team members that have been a part of global funds and leading global strategy on both marketing and financial sector, team members that have worked in tech and companies like Tesla, Misa, for example, who worked at Swift and over 10 years experience in the financial sector and marketing. Um, AJ himself actually studied blockchain at MIT under Silvio and a very extensive background inside both the investment in the financial space, also a founder of several projects that have had exits as well and Harry, our CTO. So a really diverse set of skills and really from high caliber areas outside blockchain that really came in and understood the value that things like Algorand and Algorand could bring. Very nice. Yeah, it looks like you have a solid team behind this project. And it's very nice that you also ask these types of questions so that our interviews can give you more in depth on who is standing behind the project. And I always like that, you know, transparency in each project. I like when there are photos uh, on the website, when the team is visible, and it uh, certainly gives a lot of credibility for sure. Cool. Moving on with the rest of the questions. So question number five, what are the full ecosystem tools for future identities and data that Algament is creating? And with this important data, what areas do you hope to develop and decentralize in the future. What are your plans for this? So the current version of the bridge is, is a centralized version, which means it also has KYC and we're slowly decentralizing that product to 
do without the KYC component. We think that's that's a quite important part, especially in these days. But I think what we'll probably see in the future is almost zero knowledge proof KYCs, which we're starting to see some of that technology pioneered now. Not as much of a believer in KYC, and it's not a KYC itself. The issues around individuals not being able to access the right kind of KYC to gain access to different financial systems. And, and it really creates an environment that's not necessarily inclusive. So we really want to see those kind of issues solved for the future if we are to see something like KYC come in. We're in the middle of moving towards not having to have that as a part of the bridge. So for the moment, we're really focused on delivering the bridging technology in the most powerful way possible. But in the future, as we see KYC potentially become a must, we're going to be looking at how some of the new technologies coming into market can be applied as least intrusive as possible. Very nice. Are stable coins available to mint an algament? If not, will it be included in the future? Yes, it will, as in in the future, not now. Actually working on something a little bit different. So we're already having a stable coin basket and it's one of the, the key features of the bridge. So rather than just bridging and wrapping singular tokens, we're using this basket functionality where our USD wrapped token will actually be represented by a whole range of different USD tokens across a whole range of different blockchains. What this also means is you don't just necessarily have to wrap, you can bridge direct from a native token to a native token. So. A really great example is you could deposit Gemini on the Ethereum side into the bridge and actually withdraw USDC on the Algorand side rather than actually having a wrapped token. And we think that's going to be a really important part of bridging in the future uh, and definitely a really great alternative than necessarily wrapping into another token. The only benefit we will have from the wrapped token though is it, it removes fragmentation of liquidity. So on the DEXs, for example, rather than having five or six different USD pairs, you can have the wrapped token that represents a whole range of different USD tokens meaning you'll see stronger depth of liquidity inside different pairings, which will mean pricing will be better, trading will be more powerful. And we really think that's going to be a powerful piece for the future as well. Right. Yeah, that, that's one of the hurdles of uh, the blockchain industry, actually, is that, you know, whenever you want to form a certain transaction, you always have to think, OK, which, which blockchain is that on? Oh, OK, I don't have tokens here. I have to transfer them. And then you get into this hurdle of paying fees and, and spending time. And, and then for crypto users, it's a hurdle. But for non-crypto users, it's like extremely difficult. So yeah, bridging together and, and making it as smooth as possible so that you know anyone pretty much can get into the industry without so many obstacles to overcome is definitely a great, great push for adoption of the technology, great push for exception of the masses and people actually getting it. So I'm definitely with you on that one. And I think Mark too, to add to that, like we'll see ourselves as, as invisible infrastructure in the future. I think right now, so much of what we do is we go from platform to platform but i think in the future we'll, we'll be integrated in the platform so you do have that seamless experience you want to go use um, a new play to earn game that's on algorand or on solana or on near or another ecosystem and you have an asset that's not on the right in the right blockchain they will instantly bridge it through something like algo mid silent don't even realize necessarily what's happening into the right kind of token to be then using that application and then you withdraw back to the native blockchain you actually came from uh, and we really see that as a really strong part of the future of the, the kind of infrastructure that algo mid needs to build all right did you tell us what the difference is between algament and algorand and how do these two benefit one another algorand is the layer one technology is probably the better place to start so it is the actual technology that we build upon so no different to ethereum or solana or any of the other different blockchains, Algorand is the same. The actual tech itself is, is quite different to anything we've seen before. It, it's a pure proof of stake. For those that haven't dug into Algorand, well worth some research. It's an incredible technology, an incredible team. Um, Algo Mint is one of the first apps to be built on top of Algorand. So we're one of the first to actually utilize Algorand blockchain. And for us, the key difference is rather than being a big core blockchain itself and that core piece of infrastructure itself, we will be the connector between the different blockchains. So Algorand connecting into EVM, connecting into Solana's virtual machine. Um, and that'll be our core role with that later development being providing a bridge for liquidity and transactions between the different blockchains as well. Question number eight, does Algament in the future plan on tokenizing any real world assets such as stocks, metals, commodities, or anything like that? One of the first baskets we will have post uh, USD will actually be gold. So we'll be basketing up a range of different gold tokens that are currently in market. Again, 
again, the benefit of this kind of basketing, especially with something like gold, is the ability to leverage Algo Mint's work in, in adoption. So a really great example is, say we have our basket of gold, which is called Go Gold, accepted into one of the money markets on Algorand. If you then are accepted into the basket, you gain instant access to that money market through your gold, as long as it's one of the whitelisted tokens that can go into the basket. And then if you look years down the track and say we have something like that gold token accepted at hundreds of locations, if you're a new gold product that's coming out of a particular region that has easier access for, for on-ramping and off-ramping in that region, you don't have to go to the work of being accepted in hundreds of locations. You just need to be accepted into the basket. Now you have instant access to all of these kind of integrations. And then what that really will bring, I think will be particularly interesting. Fantastic. Question number nine, what is Algamint's token? Can you tell us about its functionalities? Certainly. So the, the token is called GoMint. It will be a governance token, which sounds reasonably mundane at the moment. But, you know, the future of the token really lies in, in owning the infrastructure itself. You know, that's what we really see the token resulting in, is having true ownership and control over what this infrastructure will do in the future. I think there's a lot of work for us to do on what does token governance look like. You know, I think it, it can't be a play to win style scenario. And that's really, I think, a job for the collective blockchain community to come up with different models. You know, we've seen experience experimentation with things like quadratic voting, but I think we haven't resolved what is an ideal situation for governance yet. But at its core, it'll be a governance token. The token will also allow you to do additional things such as potentially get reduced fees, get rewards, which will be based around the fees inside the protocol, as well as be able to be multi-chain for that token in the future. So being a bridge, it makes a lot of sense for us to actually have the chain that can fluidly move between all the different blockchains we connect to. Very well. Will there be Go ERC-20 tokens in the future? Say a developer DAB starts as an ERC-20, but wants to switch later to Algorand, would Algamint make that bridge? So we will have our first ERC-20s out in, in the fairly near future. Um, it's one of the next pieces of the puzzle on the roadmap. Um, so we're actually launching Algo onto Ethereum very shortly. So it'll be launching as an ERC-20 as well. We've got HNT coming from the Helium blockchain. And then after that, we're working on the ERC-20 tokens. And once we really open that ERC-20 bridge up, we'll be able to bring across a lot of different tokens in fairly short amounts of time. It's fairly high on the agenda for us to make that fluid transition from ERC-20 through to AO Algorand and into other blockchains. Will we see an Algament mobile wallet in the future? I think there's also a very interesting question around what does the future, what, what does the future count as? And that can be a very long, a long timeline. Core focus at the minute will be more functionality inside the platform before we start looking at the mobile wallet. We do have a, a mobile friendly version of the platform, but not necessarily a mobile wallet. And I think it'll be more likely we'll probably look at integrating with the wallet experts versus building out our own. And there's some brilliant wallet technology being built on our grant as well as other chains that we're already partnering with to deliver on the ability to use those wallets to directly interact with Algorand. Okay. There's a lot of interest in L1s and scalability in general. What are your thoughts on the 2022 evolution and what do you guys make of the current market condition? You know, we're seeing definitely terms of market conditions at the moment. I think where Algorand has a lot of interesting benefits is, is number one, it's targeting quite a different audience. You know, it's had this approach to global acceptance and global adoption of blockchain as being its core focus. So for those who aren't familiar, for example, all of El Salvador's infrastructure, including all the Bitcoin, for example, is wrapped onto Algorand. So a lot of people don't actually realize that all of that, the Kivo wallet, all of this sort of stuff is built on Algorand technology. So they are bringing on this huge amount of users that haven't been inside the blockchain space before, which I think as we see that bridge of a different kind, which is the bridge from the traditional world into the blockchain world, we are going to see a different audience coming into the blockchain and the Algorand ecosystem. So I think that'll mean it'll see different flow of funds into Algorand Algorand than what is sort of traditionally you would see in the other blockchain space. At the same time, you know, Algorand as a technology is, is one of the strongest tech stacks uh, and one of the best designed layer one blockchains that we've seen come to market. And it's only just had its upgrade that allows for things like contract calls, expanded on-chain data, which in reality means it can do everything or within reason, everything an EVM chain can do. But just on the precipice of seeing Algorand really start to, one, have a huge amount of great products come to market and a huge amount of adoption. But secondly, come fruition of everything it's been building, and then from June onwards, it has a, a huge incentive program, which I think will be quite interesting because when there's not a lot happening in the other ecosystems, Algorand having this great influx of great tech, great product, and then a huge incentive program, I think we'll really start to see a lot of flow inside the space. Okay, sounds good. What does Algamin think about uh, solving issues that the DeFi ecosystem still can't solve? Can people and machines trade every day through smart devices that use digital currencies? And how do you see this in the future? 
Interesting question. I think what our brand really helps with is the layer one tech allows you to do a lot of things that you wouldn't do previously on things like Ethereum. So a really great example with things like 24 hour trading is the ability to have much deeper liquidity because the DEXs can have routing, for example, because traditionally things like transaction speed and transaction time causes a lot of issues around routing a trade. Whereas in something like Algorand, there's no congestion, there's no front running, costs are extremely low and transactions are extremely fast, which means means instead of having to have pools with different combinations of assets to allow you to do the exact trade you want to do, you can have much deeper pools in particularly focused areas and you can route those trades between different pools to achieve the trade you want to do as fast as you would any other transaction at an incredibly low cost and with less slippage than you would traditionally because you're dealing with much deeper pools than you would be if they were fragmented. So in terms of the future of trading, you know, I think Algorand has a huge advantage for bringing in that next big flow of value. And AMMs, I'm a really big believer in, but the AMMs need to be able to withstand, you know, high volume trading to really be functional, have genuine utility and viability. And technology like Algorand is gonna make that possible where you could have a 24 hour clock of trading as different parts of the world come online and they can trade in volume without seeing the same pricing problems you can see in other ecosystems. That's very nice. What is the need for Algamint in the current ecosystem and what problems does the project look to solve? You touched quite a bit on that. Perhaps you have something more to add. I think the really big one for Algorand is bringing liquidity into Algorand. You know, it's really for us, it's opening the gate for a whole range of assets to come in and take advantage of Algorand. I think HNT is actually a really great poster child for this. HNT itself, you know, I love Helium, I love the technology, I really love what the guys have been building there. In reality, the technology in terms of the blockchain they've built, it isn't been designed to be built out into a full smart contract ecosystem. It's designed to have a token that has that right utility in the Helium ecosystem. But what it means is once we bridge that into Algorand and you bring that value into our grants, they can access, you know, incredibly powerful AMMs, they can access money markets, they can access all the value inside the our grand ecosystem. So for us, it's really working on opening up the gates for those kind of assets that come and adopt and start using a layer one like Algorand that has so much potential. For now, Algamin has go BDC, go Ethereum. What is next? What is the path to adding more assets? Which assets are next and why? What are the challenges to wrapping more assets? Is it just a matter of more engineering work? Quite of a multi-vector question, I must say. <laughs> No, so and look, I know I apologize, I'm going to repeat myself because I did answer a couple of these earlier, but yeah, go BTC, go ETH now. We've got go Algo, which is Algorand, Algo on Ethereum coming up next. Uh, we then have go HNT, which is Helium on Algorand, as well as go USD and go Gold. Um, after that, it is a whole range of ERC20 tokens, and we're really looking at that, you know, top 100 on, on something like crypto market cap is probably where we should be taking our learnings from. But we're also in talks with things like Algorand themselves, other key stakeholders inside the ecosystem, other projects to say, what assets do you want us to bring in? Because we need those assets to have utility and we want to really make sure we are creating value. So there is a lot of work going into finding out what should be bridging. In terms of the tech load, like it's, it, there's definitely a lot to be done. Uh, and we have two parallel pieces, which is building in its current form, which is the centralized bridge and adding more assets and starting to work on the decentralized component of the bridge. The decentralization is going to be using our grand state proofs, which is a new technology our grand itself has been developing and will be one of the first to leverage it, which will take some time. You know, we appreciate there's a huge responsibility to running a decentralized bridge. There's huge risk. So for us, we really want to make sure we're taking our time and getting that right and dedicating a lot of resources to ensuring we do. So it's definitely a matter of scaling the team to do more, but there is, there is a nuance to it. You know, as team gets bigger, they get harder to manage you become less efficient. So for us, we're, we're just being really conscious of making sure we're building out the team in the right way to deliver on the best value and the best technology. So it's going to be a 12 month path of iterating, but you'll see new tokens coming constantly. How many active users does the Algamint platform currently have? And how many users do you expect to use your platform by the end of this year, 2022? What goals have you set for yourselves in this regard? Currently, we have about 4,000 active users. We've had a far larger number sign up looking to use the platform as we see new apps on boarded. I think, you know, for us seeing a 10x growth audience is what you expect over this year. But I think potentially, depending on the growth of the ecosystem itself, I think we could see that being a far higher multiplier, especially with things like the huge incentive program we have coming up in, in the middle of this year. So, you know, for us, it's, it's going to be have to be conscious of what that additional load on the system looks like and making sure we're prepared for that. 
because I think there's a really strong chance we will see really explosive growth as the year goes on and Algren really starts to flourish. Moving on then, uh, question number 17. What are the plans of Algamint for reaching more people and increasing their awareness? So we've really worked incredibly hard and have really deep relationships inside Algorand. So in terms of collaborations, we're working with almost every major platform in the ecosystem. So we're being accepted on money markets. We're working on joint incentive programs, the DEXs. We're working on the NFT marketplaces, accepting our assets. So for example, pricing NFTs and GoEat instead of Algo, which I think is a really great measuring stick for how it's comparing into other ecosystems like Ethereum. So we've really done a, a brilliant job. I'm obviously biased at saying we've done a brilliant job, but I think we've done a brilliant job inside the Algorand ecosystem. But this is why we're starting to look at bridging things like Helium and starting to access into these new ecosystems and these new audiences and working with things like the Helium Foundation around how we can bring value to their users inside the Algorand ecosystem. So things like the ability to borrow against HNT in a decentralized way at incredibly low interest costs and then deploy your borrowings and yield generating functions or bringing over HNT and then going into liquid staking with that HNT and then taking a synthetic liquid stake to generate income is ways we're going to be delivering a lot of value to ecosystems outside the Algorand ecosystem and, and helping bring them across to join Algorand and use Algo Mint. Very well. What's the simple way for the community to get a hold of Go Mint? So we have our launch coming up on the 30th of March. Um, it's going to be a native Algorand launch. It'll be on all the DEXs inside Algorand. But then we're also going to be listing on MEXC, which you may have gathered from our conversation today. So either option is a great way to do it. If you're already inside the Algorand ecosystem or want to get involved, you can always buy it through one of the DEXs. Otherwise, MEXC will have it available in, in the very near future and you can buy it that way. That's totally cool. Speaking of which, why did you choose to partner with MEXC? I actually have a really good friend that's worked closely with MEXC for many years. Uh, and she recommended, I was really, really familiar with it. I knew the work they did and she actually recommended that I, I meet with them and chat with them. I met with the team and got along really well. And they were really welcoming and really helpful and really excited and believed in the project. And so for us, it was a really great, easy decision to, to form a partnership with MEXC. Alrighty, and last question for today. Are there any exciting news or updates with regards to Algament that you would like to share with the users? We have plenty of constant news coming out. Most of it's revolving around obviously new features and new tokens. The token launch on the 30th of March is probably the most exciting thing happening right now. Uh, but we also have a, a new incentive program going live. So we're actually a part of the Algorand Foundation's incentive program. As we've had almost a million algos to provide as incentives to those that are helping our tokens and participating in different ways with Algomin. Uh, but also as a part of our token launch, we've got three particularly exclusive NFT from the Black Books team uh, that we're giving away as a part of the token launch. But if you come over to our Telegram or our Twitter and start following Algomid, you'll be able to keep up with all the updates. And we will drop the links down below in the description box. So for everyone who's watching, you can check that out as well. That wraps it up. The 20 questions from the community to Michael. Thank you so much for answering those guys. If you saw your question on the screen, that means you are the lucky winner and you can claim your reward by following the instructions also down in the description box. Now, Michael, it is your turn to ask your six questions back to the community so they can earn additional rewards. Okay, brilliant. Question one, what does Algomint do? Question two, when is the token launch date? Question three, where can you purchase the token? Question four, what's the name of the token? Question five, which assets do Algomint bridge now? And question six, what are the strengths of our brand? Very well. Guys, if you feel like earning additional rewards, make sure you do your research and comment down below. We will choose the lucky winners based on your replies. That pretty much wraps it up for today. Everyone who's watching, make sure to like, share, comment, uh, subscribe to our channel. Michael, thank you so much for coming over today and you know providing so much great information about your project, uh, the insights, and very, very detailed. I love it. And what you're doing is actually for the good of the whole crypto industry it will help simplify things in so many ways. And yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to develop and continue evolving in this direction. So thank you so much for coming. And I hope that we might reconnect in the future and have this conversation once again. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate it. Thanks to MEXC for having me and, and thanks everyone for listening. Take care.